All right, Nick and Andy, big Champions League test coming up for Arsenal away at Atalanta. This is a tricky one for them to kick off the Champions League campaign, Nick Mandola. On the road in Bergamo, be a hostile atmosphere in that tight little stadium. Um, rotation for Arsenal, I guess, with Tottenham beforehand, Man City afterwards in the space of a week. Those are three big challenges and their squad right now with the injuries and some of the absentees is being stretched to its limits. So I feel like we're going to find out a lot about Arsenal uh, in this game away in Italy. Yeah, in an atmosphere that, sh that should be fun. Uh, they they're going to love having Arsenal come into town. I, I think what's interesting about Atalanta is that we've seen them sell big names over the years, whether it be Christian Romero um, or Rasmus Hoyland. They they always replace. They they find mm -hmm. a way to do it. And this year it was um, uh, Coop Miners. And so it's just when you have a system and there's somebody there that you trust to implement that system, you know what you're in for. And and so they can turn over players and there's still an understanding that it Atalanta is not going to get run out of their own place. Um, you know, the, the, the only thing I know is that this won't be a blowout. And those are the least fun games, I think, for a big team to come to town for. Yeah, I mean, Andy, they, they won the Europa League last season. Adam Ola Luckman, obviously the hero in that final with a hat-trick. But they always seem to overachieve under Gasparri. I mean, they've had the odd dip where maybe, like Nick mentions, some of the buys take a little bit longer to settle in. But they all seem to kind of work out for the most part. And we know there is a big churn of Atalanta, their business model, the way they yep. sell players for high and buy and low and all the rest of it do a great job with that but who are kind of the their main threats here against Arsenal because you could argue that it is the collective right the way they just go for it and hell forever in every game and just kind of really are one of the great entertainers of, of European football consistently over the last eight to ten years probably yeah and, and what Nick was talking about there how you know a player can star and then they can be moved on and just replaced and it almost seems seamless that is uh, that's that's a commitment to a philosophy and a commitment to an identity and a way of doing things over a long period of time and and that kind of stability and consistency at the top of the club I feel like is one very important but two something that's really missing in in the modern game these days where it's all about what's happening right now what's happening this season what has happened what happened yesterday and it's not about building for the long term and that's why They've spent uh, the last six seasons, they've been outside the top five just once. They've been outside the top four just twice. They've got three third place finishes during that period. And so they have built a, a just a, 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 it's kind of a conveyor belt now of players that find a really high level uh, to perform at and showcase themselves for the world um, as a launching point into some of the biggest clubs in the world. And they've kind of hit that Dortmund sweet spot where, one, they're very good at talent identification at a young age, and they bring players in uh, on pretty good, uh, you know, in, in terms of finances, good deals, and then they leave for three and four and five and six and eight, nine, ten times as much. I believe Rasmus Hoyland was like uh, almost a thousand percent profit from when they bought him uh, coming out of Denmark. And so to have a club that's just as... Uh, just just running like a well-oiled machine like that, you can never underestimate uh, that because they've shown the consistency. And so uh, this is going to be a tough one for Arsenal with the injuries, um, the, the, the the fixtures that they've got this week. Um, and you just kind of add all those things together. Going away, difficult place to play, difficult team to play. I don't want to jump to predictions too early, but this is going to be a bit of a, of a challenging week, I think, for Arsenal um, and, and how they come out of this week, I think, is going to tell us a lot, a lot about what their season is going to be. Yeah, it really is, right, Nick? I mean, with Arsenal, with those injuries, with key players being out, it, it's, you know, this is really a big test with those three big away games in a row with Spurs, Atalanta and then City. I mean, how heavily does Arteta have to rotate? Because that's probably been one of the criticisms of him over the last couple of years that he's run the likes of Saka... Um, an Odegaard and then Rice into the ground where they come to the business end of the season and just kind of just fall short in a couple of games. And that's what's costing them against the likes of Man City in the title race. So it's a fine balance, but it feels like this Arsenal squad, even with the injuries right now, is deeper than it has been. And this is probably the test we're going to see if they have that extra quality to get through games like this and still rotate heavily. 
I agree with 95 of the words you said. The ones I don't is even with the injuries because I think mm -hmm. it was interesting that they, you know, Nelson went and Katia went, Smith Rowe went, mm -hmm. and it was a sign that we're going to bring people in to replace them. We're going to have the depth. We'll figure out those sort of new breed, that next generation of young players. And then these injuries hit. And um, I think fortunately when we talk about Thomas Partey and, and Jorginho, they're used to, you know, using their bodies over this long haul. But if the, if the fitness is right, if the fitness is right, I don't think they can rotate a lot here because mm. you could walk away from the next 10 days feeling like you're out of a title race. These are three very, very, very difficult games. And if the Spurs game was the – if you wanted to make the argument that on, on paper maybe it's on the same level as Atalanta in terms of the challenge, well, guess what? It's a derby. So um, this – I hate to be that dramatic because there's so much season to play, and Arsenal's a fantastic team, but there's a lot on the line over these next seven, eight, nine days. What are we going for? Uh, for Atalanta uh, to lose. <laughs> I think Arsenal will figure it out, um, but I think it, it, it might not be so sexy. It might be 1-0. I'll take... I'll take a 2-2 two -two draw. Um, Arsenal will – they will find a way uh, in this middle one, but I think it's going to be a big struggle on either side of it, though, in, in the Premier League. Hi there. I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host of NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And if you want even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock.